again everyone, welcome back. We're going to start off uh, our tutorial here. I believe this is uh, tutorial number six. Uh, during today's tutorial, we're going to be going over um, how to create a shop that contains all of the items in which your party has ever earned uh, and sells those items. So uh, there's a couple of things we need to do in preempt for this. Uh, first off is that we need to determine what items the player has earned. So in order to, to do that, we have to monitor the uh, party inventory uh, in which we add or dispose items from that. So um, that's going to be the, where we're going to start our script. So let's just do a little bit of uh, head work on this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to locate game party. And from game party, there it is. Okay, so sorry about that. Inside of Game Party, uh, what we're going to look for is a uh, earn item or something along those lines that is going to give you an item. The item number simply reports on how many you have. Here is our item, gain item. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to determine whether or not they have gained this item before. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this method. So I'm just going to grab it and its text here above it. All right, and we're going to create a new script section for our uh, earned items shop. Okay, so we are making our first change to game party go ahead and paste the items in there. Now, was Game Party a subclass of anything else? It was less than Game Unit. Make sure that any time you're creating aliases of uh, an existing class that you make sure that you keep the inheritance the same, otherwise functions that they might be using out of the inherited one obviously won't work. So make sure that you always do that. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and alias the gain item method here. Earned item list. Okay, and gain item. Now, one other thing I was recently uh, told was that if you do a dollar sign at after these, there is a, and, and I wasn't personally aware of this, but in um, I don't know if you guys have seen in any of the scripts out there, you you may or may not have seen this, but uh, that there is, um, when you hit F12 and you restart your game, if you do that so many times, or even with certain scripts, the more you do that, eventually the game just crashes. So doing this little dollar sign at is a method of flagging this for the debugger that uh, this item has already been aliased and does not need to be aliased again. So uh, just a helpful little tidbit to um, get you through that. So if you set that value, um, it will help prevent F12 issues. So if you wanted to go back and do that for like the class change system, uh, it's probably a good idea to get back and do that. So, um, I actually forgot to put unless that. Let me do that over here as well. Okay, so you put unless dollar sign at. Okay, so now we know that when we call gain item, that an actual item is going to be passed with the number in which you're supposed to gain and then it's going to uh, have a include equip. Now let's find out what exactly include equip does to find out whether or not this is some sort of a test or something like that. Maybe we should not actually add this to our, um, our stuff. So let's come down here for the gain item. And here we've got include equip. So it goes through each of the members of the party and determines whether or not they've got the item inside it, uh, whether or not they've currently got it equipped. So um, it's just to get the total number of items. So it's not going to be uh, helpful for what we're doing. So we'll come back on down here 
and we'll go ahead and put uh, let's see we need to put in the old method name so that it actually performs the action of that and then we need to give it all the arguments that it had before Okay. Now, what we do here is we need to determine whether or not this item has been here. So, we're going to put a earned items list equal, or let's do item equals true. What's well, probably the best way to do this? Because it's based off of items, um, you know, it's probably better is just to push the item into an array. So we'll do it that way. Okay, so that's all it's going to do is it's just going to add it into the array unless the array already contains it. So we're going to put unless it is already contained included include item. Okay, so the only time it won't do this is if it's already included in it. Okay. Now, this doesn't exist currently, so we need to make that as part of the initialization of party. So, let's go ahead and put def initialize, and I can guarantee there was already an initialize method, so we need to alias that as well. And at game party gained item list, initialize, okay, and then we'll do the unless dollar sign at, and now we'll come down here and we'll put that there, and then we'll call, well we shouldn't need to actually do any super call or anything like that off of that, so here is our item, we're just going to add that here with an equal and open parens for just a regular array. Okay, so that takes care of the actual storing the data. So now we actually need to make it available for other classes in order to see it. So we put a attribute reader, since we'll never actually change the data, all we'll ever do is just view it. And so here we're going to put earned item list. Okay. And so that should take care of that. Now what we need to do is go find out how the shop is called. So if we start shop here, it says create command window here, buy window, window shop buy new. And I don't see anything here where we're actually passing it, you know, what the contents are. So it's probably contained inside of that. So, game shop, shop goods, shop goods is then interpreted, so we need to find out what shop goods is out of game temp. Okay, let's see, game temp is a list, and it looks like it's going to actually push the item itself, pretty likely. it does not specify. So we'll just have to um, take this in two different ways. Let's go back down to our shop, window shop buy, and we'll look how it refreshes it. So here is our item that was stored up here. We just cycle through each one, and then it is a goods item, so it's actually coming out as an array. Okay, so the first, okay, so what it is is it's pushing an array indicating the type and then the item number. So let's go back and do ourselves a favor and because that information was provided back here we can actually push both sets of information. So here we can say, well actually it didn't include, I guess I thought it did. Anyways, we'll jump back over here. So we'll say case item We'll grab those pieces there so we know what types they are. And we'll bring those back down here. Paste those. And we'll go ahead and set a new variable type equals, mm, we'll just do zero. And we'll say, you know what, 
let's set it to nil. Equals zero, equals one, equals two. Okay, and let's see, it doesn't actually give us anything, well I guess accessories are armors as well, so totally covered there. So what we'll do is we'll take that, we'll add the type and the item, and we'll push those in there. And actually all it wants is the item ID, so I think it's just ID, let's check the help file here, just to verify, a item. It stores it as, does it even store the ID? Lame, usable item is its parent class. And does it have an ID? Animation ID, nope. And it's receiving that from base item and it is ID. Okay, so it is just regular ID. So we'll go ahead and close the help file. So dot ID is correct. So we go ahead and actually let's create this separately. This equals that. And then we'll say this and unless it includes this. Just an easier way. You can use variables uh, anytime you want, so you can generate them and dispose of them as you as you please. Um, so this is actually the item um, or the item details. So I guess we could just put item details and replace that here, and like that. Now we're now we're set with both sets of details. So we've got the type and the ID. We'll go back up to Windows Shop Buy, and we'll go ahead and, so zero is items, one is goods, and two is that, and it actually is providing the ID back. So now, all we need to do is call a shop when we set these shop goods. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a custom shop. This custom shop, is going to actually um, be just a regular shop, but what it's going to do is call out these shop goods for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a subclass of window shop buy, and we're going to call this class earned item shop. Okay, we'll make that less than window shop buy. We'll do a def initialize, and then during this initialize, it's going to set that value out of this one here, this value, that temporary value that it, it pulls in. So we're going to put that here, and we're going to set that equal to game party dot earned item list. Okay, and that is it. See how simple that is? So, oh, you know what? Actually, you need to add super. That way it calls the super method, which then in turn gathers that list and then generates the shop. So, all we do now is copy that, go ahead and create a new event here, go with uh, Mr. Merchant Dude here, and then we'll say call script earned item shop dot new, and we have to put scene equals earned item shop dot new. Okay, that's it. Watch this. Oh, darn. What does it need on that super? I guess I should have checked on that. Scene shop. What does it need here? Earned items. Initialize window shop by. Scene shop is regular, but it doesn't have an initialize method here, which means it's probably getting it out of scene. That doesn't make any sense. Why would they have it there? Scene base, there is no initialize 
this method there either. Let me run that one more time just so I can note what the error message is here a little more closely. And then we can debug into that to find out where our problem is. Earned items shop line 35 argument error occurred. Wrong number of arguments 042. So it's saying it's expecting two, but I didn't give it any. Now, why is it expecting two? Oh, that's why. Um, we did it for window shop buy. We uh, actually should have done that for scene shop. That would be why. Scene shop. Okay. Go ahead and do that one more time now. Undefined method each for nil class. And that's saying shop goods is coming back as nothing, which means that our method down here is not returning anything. Earned item list pushes those. Did I spell it the same? That's usually the problem. Sorry guys, but this is the joys of programming. It's to get in here and find these little problems, and clean them out. Okay, so this value here is returning nil. This list is generating nil. So let's do this. Let's ask this what that value is. So we'll just tell it to print that. And we'll ask it to print this as well up here to make sure that it's being generated with a blank. And make sure I spelt everything right. Oh, you see that? I had it in there as item list rather than items list, in which it was here. All right, so I don't need to debug that. It was a misspelling. Gotta love it. Alright, we'll go ahead, apply that. Try this Unamas. And there you have it. Okay, so let's go ahead and earn ourselves some items. We'll have him give us a couple of items here first. So as you saw, the item when menu was empty. So if we go ahead and give ourselves a potion, and then gives ourselves a high potion, and then we give ourselves a elixir, then that is what he will sell. Because each of those items is gained by your party before you launch the scene. And there you have it. Okay, so it's listing everything appropriately. Um, looks like everything's set up, so that's, that's all I've got for you guys tonight. Um, what we're going to, um, I'm going to try to get into a little bit more of uh, behind the scenes, what's really going on when we create a full scene in our next episode. Um, I'm just trying to keep this one kind of uh, short and sweet. So we'll resume that uh, tomorrow. Um, maybe not tomorrow. Maybe at, I'll, I'll actually have to wait till Sunday again. But anyways, I uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Uh, be sure to uh, leave some comments, some additional script suggestions in which you guys might be wanting. Uh, and we'll go back and we'll generate those scripts for you and help you learn how to do the programming while we do it. So if you guys have any questions, leave, them, leave your comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Okay, talk to you guys later.